What has caught my imagination is the arts um, as a tool of social change and of non-formal learning in community. So with women across Canada who are using the arts to bring community together, whether it's to bring community together because of issues of isolation or because the urban environment is threatening and unhealthy or whether they're trying to stop uh, a gas-fired power plant from being put into their community, whether they're trying to deal with issues like such as sexual, uh, sexual exploitation. Um, in whatever area or, or racism, whatever area they happen to be working in, they're using the arts as the mobilizing tool, as the tool that captures the imagination and brings the community together and then um, enables them to express their ideas um, more creatively and more artistically. Um, I think we're, in many ways, we're cut off from the creative aspects of society, at least engaging in the creative aspects of society. We're maybe able to, particularly privileged classes, go to museums and see plays and things like that. But what these women are doing is engaging community people, like groups of homeless women, in discussions around health and well-being but using the arts as the medium and so the women sit and they create um, individual artworks or collective artworks as they grapple with these very very difficult issues and the combination of watching them be creative um, and but but grapple with very difficult issues in their lives is is quite fascinating and watching the transformations that come over them um, so how the art eases them in and out of these conversations, makes these conversations more palatable, makes them easier to have because violence, um, most of the women um, who I've encountered who live on the streets are on the streets because of violence. That's not a nice topic. That's not an easy topic. That's not something they want to remember. Um, these aren't therapy classes though. These are ways for them to come together collectively talk about the different kinds of issues. My arts projects have been global, so I've been working with people in New Zealand, in Malta, and Sweden, and India, and different places around the world looking at how the arts are used for, diff for different means. So it does start, it starts at a level of change of the human being themselves, and that critical engagement and growth that they experience, but it's also about changing a community. Um, because if we don't do things collectively, there's going to be no major change. It doesn't, you can change all you want as an individual, but the politics and society, the structural way in which society is, if we don't work collectively as a community, we won't make any change as well. And then, of course, around different kinds of issues, we have to think transnationally and globally because violence against women is a global issue. Environmental problems, those are global. The environment doesn't just think, oh well, uh, let's see, I'll just wait here, I'll pollute, I'll just be smoggy right here and I won't go anywhere else. So these are global issues as well. So they're at the individual level in terms of people's sense of self and sense of agency. They're at the community level in terms of a collective sense of, of agency. Um, and they're at the global level in terms of how do we change everything. How do we transform this world? How do we turn this around and make it go in some different directions? Um, no one says that'll be easy, and it's not. And in fact, working with, uh, to me, working with ambiguity and chaos and confusion and different opinions, uh, that's what's interesting about it, is not everybody thinks the same. A, a group of people may agree that the community needs to be changed, but how it needs to be changed will be fundamentally different as you speak with individuals, which is why you have to deal at different levels all the time. And I've always worked internationally, so the international is really important to me. And um, so the arts, um, I find, are the, well, that's a, it's an international tool. There's arts, arts and creativity is in all cultures. I teach a course called um, Cultural Transformation and Social Learning Through the Arts. Mm. So I'm working with, there are teachers from schools who come into my, uh, into my classes, and there are also um, community activists and educators, people who want to make a difference in the world. Uh, whether they're teachers in their school or whether they're people in the world, they want to make a difference. So I'm introducing them to how the arts can be used. And there are some larger examples, such as the one I've just spoken about, but there's other smaller ways in which they can begin to use the arts. And I bring in artists to work with them, so they actually, not only do they, we talk about the projects and sort of the theories of creativity um, and, and change and adult education and adult learning for social change, but we also engage in a collective art 
project and they make quilts or they do a photography project. Um, we had one a group of students who took on an environmental issue and they did a photo novella which is a photo story. So they went around and they picked up on that issue of waste and Mr. Floaty was running around at the time and they created this wonderful story about about waste and the environment in Victoria and then presented that visually to everybody through this photo novella, this photo story and and put it all together. So there are many ways in which the students um, can be involved in this and in some of the projects that I'm working on, I work downtown with, some, with a group of homeless women with the open door and one of my students was actually working with those women and I got involved and that's when we started using the arts. Uh, in working with these women. So yeah. When I fell into the arts, um, I was actually working um, internationally on the uh, in the environmental movement, um, work, working for a, with a project called Learning for Environmental Action. So trying to work with the environmental movement to say that it's not good enough to stand up there and lecture people and just deliver the science. You have to understand that there are different ecological knowledges, there are different ways of knowing, people engage differently. Try, try, to, create some try to create some spaces where you respect people's knowledge and bring them together rather than just, well, they need to know this kind of information or they won't be able to change their attitudes and behaviors. Science is important, it is, but not everything's a matter of science. Right? Science matters, but it's um, so it gave me a new lease on life uh, when I started to see the arts being used as the tool and people actually engaging and trying to cross cross sectors such as the labor movement which is understood that they only care about jobs and the environmental movement they don't care about jobs they only care about trees those sorts of attitudes that you get and they are very simplistic sometimes when you hear people say them um, and then bringing the artists together with these two different uh, disparate movements in, in some ways, uh, although I would argue that in many parts of the world they come together quite nicely, but nevertheless bringing those together and then what they did is they uh, they decided to use these mobile canvases which were the, which were the, they were working with the sanitation workers, so they used the garbage trucks and they painted all these images on the sides of the garbage trucks, but the one that blew up happened to be at the time there was a huge um, political issue around Toronto um, shipping its waste to an abandoned mine in northern Ontario and there was a lot of controversy around that. Some communities thought it was a good thing because it would be money and certainly the politicians were looking for jobs and money and a way to deal with the waste. And uh, so they decided to symbolically depict that. And the, san the, the trucks, the, the sanitation trucks belong to the city copyright belongs to the artist and that's really important to know. So when they showed the city the small drawing uh, of the imagery, the city went, yeah, 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 nice little uh, arts project, isn't that cute, play with it outside. So they, when it, but when it went up on the side of a garbage truck, and I don't know if you've ever stood beside garbage trucks, but you actually need scaffolding to get up on them, they're so huge, so we had the, the, they had to build scaffolding to get up there, and when the image went up, um, it was quite astounding and then they, the city was so proud of its little arts project that it had the trucks all brought down onto a lot in the center of the city of Toronto and the media came in full force. And I was actually standing right beside the first camera, there's a whole row of cameras, all the media is there, there's a whole row of cameras because the arts will attract the media really well, it's very nice. And I heard him go, it's Kirkland Lake. Uh oh, and it just went down like wildfire down the media and one of the counselors saw it and he flipped out and he started screaming to get that truck off the lot to be whitewashed. You do that in front of the media at your peril, yeah. at your peril. So um, the media captured it, there was all sorts of things going on but then there's Laidlaw with a charitable status number <laughs> to worry about, right? They, they didn't do it. Laidlaw didn't create it and I explained to them that that had nothing to do with them. But uh, nevertheless, it was, <laughs> it was an explosion. And the next, I woke up a couple of mornings later and that counselor was